Hey Forum, my name is Manny, aka Cascade Sense. Welcome to another video. Like the title says, this one is on my top 10 affordable summer fragrances for 2020. But yeah, what's not to love about affordable summer fragrances? Regardless of price tier, typically you're going to have to keep respraying some of these lighter and or beachier offerings. So if you don't want to pay out of pocket for the offerings I typically talk about on this channel, at least this list is for you. But also just know that the fragrances here will be at discounted rates. So sites like Fragrance Buy, Fragrance Net, and Fragrance sex are going to be discussed throughout the video. In case you're apprehensive about purchasing from one of these retailers, just know that in my personal experience, I haven't had an issue with fakes or anything like that or getting scammed. But if my word's not enough for you to take, then I please urge you that when you do place an order from one of these websites, definitely select a PayPal option just because you'll be protected by PayPal satisfaction policy in case anything goes awry with your transaction. And since I'll be name dropping some of these retailers throughout the video, just know that I'm not currently sponsored by any of them for the shooting of this video or rather at the time of the shooting of this video. But with that being said, hopefully you guys get to save a big chunk of change going forward and we might as well count down. So let's start off at number 10, all the way down to one, getting it in. Here we go, it's Versace Pour Homme. Now in case you didn't know, the Versace Pour Homme line are actually all dupes. Like they're not actually original blends. Like each are based off of one, if not two different respective fragrances out there. And typically I like each of them for their own little nuances and whatnot. That and the price is typically way more forgiving while maintaining a level of quality that's more than passable along with its complement factor. So it's not surprising for me to see something like this in Versace Pour Homme be further more ubiquitous than the once ubiquitous Chanel Olor Homme Spore, which this is based off of. But yeah, what do I like about it more than just the price point? Rather than the orange and aldehydic vibes that you get straight out of the Olor Homme Spore, here in the Versace, you get something that's a little bit more citrus reliant on the opening. So very juicy with that Diamante Citrus, just really refreshing stuff. Back this up with orange leaves and neroli, which is like a citrus floral, to carry it into the base. It just feels more refreshing throughout its lifespan. Doesn't exactly dry down into something that's sweeter like a tonka or anything. I feel like it's a more appropriate summer scent. There's not a lot to hate here. It has the brand name, it has the DNA, but part of why it's ranked so low on this list is not that it's a clone or anything. I have other clones I'm going to mention on this list, but I'm just not that jazzed to wear it because believe it or not, a lot of people within my area, specifically my friends, do wear the scent. As a result, I'm just not excited to wear it with the homies. I'm not trying to match their fragrance. But since you can find this for more than a third of its price off, then how can I not include this on the list? Under 50 discounted, I think is uh, pretty good. So check it out if you have yet to. Again, it's a Versace Pour Homme by Versace at number 10. All right, moving on to my number nine affordable fragrance for summer, here it is. It's White by Lalique. Now, White to me is a modern day classic, not in it's a proven classic with its sales numbers like to that of Bleu de Chanel or maybe YSL Lom or anything like that, but rather it smells classic in an old school gentlemanly kind of way, but just dressed up as if it's something a little bit more modern now. So here to open up the scent, you have a little bit of bergamot as well as lemon tree leaves. Lemon tree leaves kind of used similarly to a Petit Grand, if you're familiar with that note, which comes from bitter orange tree. So yeah, equal parts citrusy and citrusy in a green kind of way. Back that up with some white pepper, which is a fresh spicy pepper, which is something that typically kind of hurts my nose. For example, I don't like the black pepper in stuff like F Black by Ferragamo, but here I just feel like it's really well blended. There's no harsh edges or anything like that. It's just overall a really nice citrusy, fresh spicy that leans gentlemanly facets of dated fragrances from the past just dressed up with a little bit more contemporary of a bergamot opening. That being said, if you are a little bit younger than myself, maybe 25 or under, you might find that this stuff leans mature, so I can understand your apprehension, but it's definitely still worth trying, especially concerning its evaluation. For this 125 ml, it actually retails for about 100 euros, but somehow at discounted rates, it's just going for really, really low. So just under 30 US dollars for this very presentation, I just think it's absolutely incredible. So feel free to spam this throughout your workday or whatever you want to feel like using this for. I think it's a daily wear because you do have a lot of juice to get through here for the summer. So why not? So again, there it is. It's White by Lalique, my number nine affordable summer fragrance. Now moving on to the number eight fragrance on the list. Here we go from the sensual blends line of Azaro. This one is Ginger Lover. Now it's cool to see Azaro do stuff in a proven presentation from the classic smelling Azaro Pour Homme, but it doesn't exactly smell too classic. Also, it's not generic in a clubby way like that of Wanted, if you're familiar with that scent, but it's not like this doesn't smell like something else because it definitely does. And that's Lom Ultim by YSL. If you're familiar with that scent, it's one from the fragrance community that does garner pretty good attention. However, from actual casuals out there who are typically the primary market for YSL Lom scent, 
sense. I just don't feel like it's one that is quote unquote as heavily respected as the initial one. I just feel like the rose in that scent kind of hits differently, but the rest of it is rather pleasant if it weren't for that note, in my opinion. Again, I actually find that fragrance to be pleasant. I just don't think most casuals would. So to have something here that channels the same fresh spiciness without the rose, I think is really nice. And so you have a really vibrant lime opening here, which I love because yeah, I'd say lime is probably my favorite citrus opening barring yuzu. Back that up with some ginger like the name says, and it's just a really nice contemporary daily fragrance for your ginger lover. Damn, I definitely just described who's wearing this scent as the name of the scent. Not gonna lie though, other than the lime and the ginger that I get at first and it just keeps tapering down, I really don't get much out of the base here. Yeah, it has a light vetiver, but nothing too special. So if you don't mind respraying the scent throughout the day, then I think it's all right. But that's only because you really can't go wrong at the evaluation you can find it for discounted. I think for just under 30 US dollars, it's really, really good. So check it out already for a more straightforward take of Lam Ultim by YSL. Again, it's Ginger Lover by Azaro at number eight. All right, moving on to the number seven fragrance on this list. And here we go with another dupe and might be the dupe of all dupes. This one is called Cool Water by Davidoff. Now, Cool Water is fairly ubiquitous for years throughout anyone who just has fragrance collections. You know, this might be the affordable fragrance that someone saw at the drugstore to gift you for Christmas or something like that. But in the fragrance community, this fragrance is either a little bit more meaningful or a little bit more resented, you know, because it's the one that kind of started the dupe trend with its likeness to Green Irish Tweed by the beloved Creed House. That being said, that fragrance is really renowned for its grassiness, and I think this fragrance actually does a not so good job of trying to replicate that. Yeah, it's greener in a more fresher aspect with like peppermint and other notes, but I do find that this fragrance leans way more watery, which makes sense given its name. So after its aromatic opening with the lavender and that peppermint and it just getting watery furthermore and furthermore throughout, I just feel like this is one of those classic dumb reach fragrances that you kind of spam after a nice workout at the gym or one that you just want to have last throughout your workday and it'll just flat out get the job done, no questions asked. So in my personal opinion, I think it's well worth the typically under $25 price point for a 125 ml like this. But if you're already hell bent on pursuing creeds, I can't blame you, that's what I did first. Then at that point, just get the creed. But if you're quote unquote balling on a budget, just get something like this. So if you've yet to try it, definitely do so. You can pretty much find this at any stockist out there and then eventually buy it at a discounted rate online. At number seven, it's Cool Water by Davidoff. All right, moving on to number six, and this is another sensual blend from Azaro. This one is called Wild Mint. Now I've mentioned some really straightforward scents already. I think this is actually the most straightforward scent on the list by far. Mainly because the notes listed here, I feel like are the most properly marketed. So scent wise, it opens up with Calypsone, which described by the people who who made that note slash ingredient in Givaldan as an ozonic melon-like scent, which I could definitely not disagree with. So that note kind of smells like the cucumber melon note from back in the day, using like car fresheners and air fresheners and things like that, liquid soaps, lotions and whatnot. But you know, mainly that melon part in that scent without much of the vegetal freshness of a cucumber. But to add to the greenness is a freshness of that mint here, which is heavily spammed, but leans more fresh in a green sweet way, if that makes any sense. More like a class experiment in how I see that candied throughout gums or candies out there. But unlike most mint notes that I come across in perfumery, this one performs fairly heavily off of my skin. Again, I did mention its sweetness here and sweet stuff typically tends to project off of me really well, but that's not the case for a lot of people. In that case, try double spraying just because again, this won't cost you that much in case you don't mind spamming through all of your fragrances. But thankfully again, I won't have to just because I know it works more than wonders off of my skin. So for me, an almost beastly mint for just under $30, I think is incredible value. Don't get me wrong, it's not a world beater designer mint scent or anything, but for the price of a tray pizza, I just really can't complain is what I'm saying. So again, check it out if you've yet to. It's my number six affordable summer fragrance this year, Wild Mint by Azaro. Now moving on to number five, here we go with one of the more notorious DNAs in modern day men's perfumery currently. Here we go. Yeah, not exactly Sauvage, but it is Versace Pour Homme Dylan Blue. So yeah, definitely Versace's take on your Sauvage as it opens up with a really bright bergamot with a primarily blue base. That being said, you're lacking a little bit of that metallic backbone, which Sauvage is also known for. I think it's a little too much off my skin, kind of comes off as tinny, which I just dislike. So here after that juicy bergamot, you get more of that deep waters and Broxen type vibe laced with a little patchouli. I just think it's awesome because it adds to how deep that smell smells. 
I know some young people are a little bit apprehensive of patchouli just because that tends to lean hippie-ish, if not a little bit more mature. You know, it's kind of green earthiness. But here I'd say it's rather subdued and you're just getting more of just, again, a more deep watery facet, kind of shower gel kind of effect. And if you're somehow unfamiliar with the modern day blue scents out there right now, just know that this stuff doesn't really lean oceanic just because it doesn't feel like a beachy kind of salty scent. So with it's just more straight up aquatic blue feeling vibe, I feel like it just becomes more versatile throughout the year. That being said, I really do feel strongly about this fragrance just because it's one of my more favorite blue fragrances out there. And it coincidentally, it so happens to be one of the cheapest as far as what you can get it for discounted wise. So since it retails for almost 90 US dollars and the fact that you can find it for just under 50 on a site like Fragrance Buy, I just think it's amazing. And I would just jump on something like this if you want something throughout the year, but this time mainly summer as something you can just spam everywhere just in case you just don't know what to wear. So again, if you've yet to try this, try this already whenever you get a chance. It is the number five affordable fragrance on this list. Versace Pour Homme Dylan Blue by Versace. Now moving on to my number four scent on the list, and I swear this is the last dupe I'll be talking about today. It's by Ferrari, believe it or not, a car brand. My first time talking about a car brand on this channel, I feel it is Bright Neroli. So if you don't know already, this fragrance is actually based off of Tom Ford's Neroli Portofino. At this point, I've spent enough time with both of them throughout the months, and believe it or not, they kind of smell really similar, at least in the air. So I think it does one of the best jobs of replicating the scent or that vibe out of any of the dupes that I've mentioned on this list, to be honest. That being said, I actually do feel like it does certain things that could be argued that are better. The citrusy opening here feels like it's a little bit more of a Zing, like a long lasting citrus with a little bit of a backbone of Neroli rather than Neroli being the main event. It just off of my skin doesn't feel like a citrus floral like Neroli Portofino actually does. Somehow Neroli Portofino is also a little bit juicier as well, but again, that might not be the vibe that you're looking for if you want something that's typically just more sharp and masculine. Again, that's what this does well if that's what you're looking for. But at the end of the day with how they're marketing the fragrance as a Neroli scent, I just don't feel like it's remotely as premium of a Neroli scent as Neroli Portofino actually is, which is fair. We're comparing a mainline Ferrari release to a Tom Ford private blend after all. But since we are also talking about private blend, if we're talking evaluation, we're talking $325 for a 100 ml, which is a lot. So to be able to get something like Bright Neroli for as low as around $25 on a fragrance net, for example, I just think it's absolutely amazing. It even lasts longer off of me too, in case that helps with your decision. So definitely check it out if you've yet to. Again, at number four, this one is Bright Neroli by Ferrari. All right, moving on to the number three affordable scent now. Here we go. It's Mugler Cologne Come Together by Mugler. Now, I already mentioned this in my previous summer designer video this year, but keep in mind this newer version of Mugler Cologne in Mugler Cologne Come Together is just the old Mugler Cologne package with a new subtitle or repackage with a new subtitle rather. But yeah, I can't say anything new about this scent really besides a name change. It still smells like that good old Irish Spring vibe. So maybe you're truly looking for that soapy scent that just feels the most fresh out of the shower barring any shower gel kind of vibes out there. One that you can just spam for whatever you are using it for, whether you're going to the gym, whether you're doing some yard work or going to your office or anything like that. If you just want to go unnoticed, this is definitely one of those scents that I think are really appropriate. Again, I already mentioned this too, but Thierry Mugler himself, I believe said that this is a fragrance for people who don't like fragrances. And I know that sounds like I'm killing the hype for some of y'all, but if you really are passionate about fragrance from a utilitarian perspective and you feel like reaching for this or that for all these other reasons and you find joy out of that, then I definitely feel like you need this in your collection. So if you can also score 100 ml for under 50, definitely do it. I think it's a pretty good value if you're actually going to use it, then just do it. So yeah. So if you don't know, now you know, there it is again at number three for this affordable summer fragrances list, Mugler Cologne Come Together by Mugler. Now we're almost there for them. Thank you for hanging on. We're finally at number two. And this time we have another Lalique here. This one is called Ancre Noir Sport. And I'm gonna step it up from what I just said about Mugler Cologne. And that's Ancre Noir Spore is a fragrance for people who already like fragrances, but don't necessarily like summer fragrances. So maybe you're already wearing fragrances, but you like thicker, more leathery and or woodier and or just more resin this stuff. Maybe you like the OG initial version of Ancre Noir. But what happens when it gets hotter in your area and all of a sudden you want something to channel that similar vibe as a daily, you know, without feeling like a parka or anything like that. Q Ancre Noir Spore, I feel like it's really 
a perfect version of that scent for the summer heat. Of course, the initial version is known for an inkyish vibe, which kind of is channeled from the cypress along with other woods and greens. But with that toned down here, it feels a little bit drier, but it still feels a little bit more uplifted just because you have so much juice coming in from the opening with the citruses. And honestly, it's a lot more juicier than I thought thought it was going to be because you know it still looks super dark here and whatnot I know they're still trying to channel darker more thought-provoking vibes and whatnot but in my opinion on smell alone I just feel like this is actually just more of a really good brain off scent one again that's not that challenging with the Ancre Noir DNA toned down but just a little bit different with something you're also used to in citrus so I feel like I do love everything about me getting the scent blend quality is good decent enough thought put into it simple enough I can wear it for nearly anything and most importantly for the sake of this list the price this thing actually retails for about 90 euro which I actually don't think is horrible for an evaluation but for years on the discounted market you can get this for around 30 or less I think that's absolutely incredible like 30 US dollars for this so overall as far as this list is concerned I feel like it's one of the best blends and best deals period and if you're looking for something just a little bit more masculine I definitely recommend it so check this out if you have yet to already still inky but not really this time again Again, it's Ancre Noir Spore by Lalique at number two. But last but not least, here we go at number one. Here we go, it's Icon by Dunhill. Again, characterized by a traditional masculine breakdown of a citrusy opening, an aromatic and spicy heart, and a woody base. I feel like Icon does those three stages just each wondrously. The bergamot here is rather contemporary feeling like it could be a bergamot place in a blue fragrance right now. But again, I just really love how it's placed here just because I feel like the scent could be furthermore dated if it wasn't here like this. So not that sharp, but kind of juicy and sweet and it's just overall pleasant. Once again as well, I am kind of sensitive to black pepper and there's really no harsh edges with it right here. I feel like the perfumer definitely did a good job with that note along with some of the aromatics too. And with a woody-ish dry down towards the base with a little bit of leather, I just feel like it's just right. Admittedly, it does lean dressed up, so if you are the type to wear a lot of smart casual wear, perfect. But I wouldn't speak against wearing this if you're just a t-shirt and jeans kind of guy. I mean, the world just getting more casual nowadays, so it is what it is. But yeah, I just really love how you can find something as distinguished as this for as low of a price as you can get it. Like for a really well blended eau de parfum concentration for just under 40 bucks, I think it's criminal. Criminal as in, I feel like you're the one committing a steal with that kind of buy, especially when it actually retails for 100 US so think about that and yeah if you enjoy a really good deal a really good scent that you can use for nearly anything that's both traditional and contemporary feels distinguished too again you just can't go wrong with this guy right here so check this out if you've yet to by far my favorite scent on this list at number one it is Icon by Dunhill and there it is for him hopefully you enjoyed this list on Cascade Scents affordable fragrances I don't typically talk about enough on this channel but if you guys want to see more of this please let me know in the comment section below also let me know if I missed some affordable fragrances fragrances that you guys are used to reaching for during this time of the year maybe i'll check them out as well but as always if you really enjoy the show also subscribe to this channel if you have yet to really helps me out a lot really helps you too if you want to get this kind of content and if you definitely want to be the first ones to get this content definitely hit the notification bell as well so you don't miss pretty much anything no ifs ands or buts but until next time i really appreciate the ongoing support take care for now peace out bye wear your fragrances